بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Today we will start with a new surah سورة عبس سورة عبس is a Meccan surah and it was sent down after Surah Al-Najm and before Surah Al-Qadr. Its name, as Imam Al-Suyuti said, uh, this is one of the surahs that only has one name, which is Abasa, Abbas. The reason for uh, revealing this uh, surah, there's a story behind this. Uh, if you recall, we said some uh, surahs and some verses from the Quran have no reason, no particular reason behind it, no story behind it, no event, no question was asked for which this was revealed. But there are uh, cases, surahs, or verses in the Quran, in some surahs, that have a reason behind their revelation. And this is one such surah. Surah Abasa was revealed, uh, and there's a story behind it, uh, narrated to us by uh, our mother, Aisha radiallahu anha, and it's reported by uh, an Imam Tirmidhi in his Sunan and classified as authentic by Sheikh al Albani. The story goes uh, like this. There was a, uh, a blind companion by the, by the name of Abdullah ibn Umi Maktoum who had uh, believed and embraced Islam and he was one of the early companions, one of the early Muslims uh, in the da'wah and the call to Islam. Uh, one day he approached Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while he, alayhi salatu as Aisha describes, was sitting, inviting one of the uh, uh, high-ranking people of Quraysh to Islam. Now, Ibn Umi Maktoum is blind. He didn't know what was going on. So he came to the Prophet, وسلم, or where the Prophet was uh, sitting, uh, and he said, Ya Rasul Allah, arshidni. O oh, Messenger of Allah, guide me, teach me. And the Prophet, the Prophet Sallallahu uh, turned away and did not respond and kept talking to that uh, important person. In, in another narration, the, the, the story uh, stated that there were actually certain people by name like Abu Jahl, Utbah ibn Rabi'ah, uh, Umayyah, uh, Ubay ibn Khalaf, and another narration added Al-Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Going on with the story, so uh, Ibn Ummi Maktoum repeated the question and the, prob the Prophet Sallallahu would just not respond back to the point that Ibn Ummi Maktoum said, am I saying something that is disturbing or upsetting to you? The Prophet Sallallahu said no. And then Allah Azza wa Jal revealed these verses. Abasa means frowned, to frown at someone. Later after the revelation of the surah, the Prophet وسلم, whenever he would see Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum, he would say, welcome the one on whose account my Lord admonished me as a way of honoring him in front of everybody. Radiallahu anhu wa sallallahu ala Muhammad. Let's go to the core of the session, which is the tafsir. Abasa wa tawalla. He, referring to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, frowned and turned away. And ja'ahu al-a'ma. Because there came to him the blind man. The, the uh, insistence of, of Ibn Ummi Maktoum to address the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to respond back to him was interrupting the, the uh, attempt of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, convincing, if you may, uh, this person or these people, according to the, to the different narrations, to embrace Islam. And let's just uh, visualize the situation properly. First of all, this man was blind, so he did not realize what was going on and that the Prophet ﷺ was first busy, secondly busy with important people. What is the importance of such people embracing Islam? It is known in any society that the elite of the society, the high-ranking people in the society are very influential. And when one of them 
adopts an idea, is convinced with something, those who follow him or look up to him or fear him would follow it, would accept it, right? So the Prophet ﷺ had this hope in mind and heart when he was talking to these people. Additionally, the Prophet ﷺ was relying on the fact that this man is an early believer, firm believer, so the strength of his faith would help him put up with this situation. You need to remember that these names that were mentioned, in addition to other names from the high-ranking people, the elite, the leaders of Quraysh, were the obstacle that was preventing the call to Allah to spread. So the Prophet ﷺ was hoping by passing this obstacle that the call to Allah Azza wa the message of Allah Azza wa would spread much easier. Also, during that time, the Prophet ﷺ and his followers, the companions radiallahu anhum, were oppressed, were tortured, were persecuted, right? So they needed all the moral support from Allah Azza wa they can get. Yet, when this happened, correcting the path, correcting the behavior had to be done. You see, a lot of people said during the time of Muhammad Wasallam, up until our time, that this Quran is from Muhammad Wasallam. It's not revealed, it's not a divine message. However, this particular surah proves otherwise. How can someone rebuck him himself openly and make it part of faith? Part of the divine message is that he was admonished. In the book, he is saying to people, is your source and reference. Had that been from him, he would, he would not have done that. He frowned and turned away. The, the uh, style here changed. The first two verses, Allah Azza wa is talking as if he's talking about a third party. He frowned and he turned away. Talking about someone. But then the style changes to a direct tense. The Prophet ﷺ is directly a, a, approached by the following verse. وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَعَلَّهُ يَزَّكَّ But what would make you perceive, O Muhammad, that this perhaps, that perhaps he, meaning Ibn Umm Maktoum, might be per, uh, purified. And this change of style is out of mercy from Allah Azza wa Jal and out of love to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the admonishment in the first two verses were not direct. But then Allah Azza wa Jal is again correcting. وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ what, what would make you perceive, O Muhammad, that this man from whom you turned away would be purified would learn what would purify his soul, purify his behavior from sinning. Or be reminded, and the remembrance would benefit him. If what is hoped for someone who hears the message to be purified and thus be reminded with Allah Azza wa Jal and accountability, and accountability, then this man is worthier than those who turned away. Those who are standing in the face of 
the call and the mission. Those who are denying, those who are rejecting. These people, the believers, or who come to purify themselves, are more deserving to hear the message, to get the guidance, to get instructions from you than uh, all others. As for he who thinks himself without need. The people of Quraysh felt due to their wealth, to their status, to their strength, to their influence in the community and the society, that they don't need Allah and they don't need to hear what Muhammad has to say. So they are in no need. They are without a need. They don't need Allah. They don't need the message. They don't need to be reminded. Those people, they don't deserve to be given preference over others because they're either weak, poor, oppressed. Because what matters is their eagerness to learn or accept the faith. فَأَنْتَ لَهُ تَصَدَّى To him, you give attention. Allah is telling Muhammad وسلم, Those who turn away, those who, who feel and openly say, we don't need you, we don't need your God, we don't need your, uh, your message, you pay attention to them. وَمَا عَلَيْكَ أَلَّا يَزَّكَّى and not upon you is any blame if he will not be purified. Allah Azza wa Jal is clarifying an important matter to Muhammad in Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is that the, he does not incur sin if he calls people and they turn away. If he spreads the message and only few accept it, those who don't will be blamed. And he is only responsible for conveying, as Allah says in a different verse, مَا عَلَى الرَّسُولِ إِلَّا الْبَلَاغِ The messenger has no mission, no task, except to convey the message. وَأَمَّا مَنْ جَاءَكَ يَسْعَى But as for he who came to you striving for knowledge, وَهُوَ يَخْشَى While he fears Allah, that is, فَأَنْتَ عَنْهُ تَلَهَى From him, you are distracted. Again, these three verses repeat the instructions to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Set the priority right to him and to anyone who calls for Allah azza wa jal who tries to guide people to the path of Allah Azza wa Jal, preference is to be given to those who are, who have the zeal, who have the interest, those who turn away, those who fight you. You should not give them preference on account of those who want to know, who want to learn, who are interested, who want to purify themselves, who want to be guided. Don't ignore these to gain these. Kalla innaha tadhkira. No, indeed, they, the verses, are a reminder. It is a reminder so that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not do this again. It's a reminder to those who call to Allah azza wa jal not to do the same thing. It is a reminder to Muhammad وسلم, so he knows what benefits him and to refrain what might harm him and warn him against it. فَمَنْ شَاءَ ذَكَرَهُ So whoever wills may remember, may remember it, the revelations. It is recorded in honored sheets. فِي صُحُفٍ مُكَرَّمٍ this reminder or these verses are recorded in the preserved template 
الصحف المحفوظة المكرمة honored and preserved مرفوعة مطهرة raised and purified they are raised in position they are in the heavens they are raised in status they are exalted and uh, they are purified from any defect or they are protected from the devils being able to alter it. The AD Sephara carried by the hands of messenger angels. There are angels that uh, have the task of being ambassadors. Sephara can be Sephir is an ambassador. This is the plural uh, form of it. They are ambassadors from Allah Azza wa Jal to the messengers and the prophets conveying the words of Allah Azza wa Jal uh, to them. Kiramin Barra. They are noble and beautiful. They are noble with Allah Azza wa Jal. They have noble manners and they are Barra. They are obedient to Allah Azza wa Jal. So they combined nobility in creation and in status with Allah Azza wa Jal and in manners. Uh, this concludes this first set uh, of verses uh, of Surah Abbas. And then the scene changes to another uh, topic which is addressed by the following set of verses. With this, we'll conclude this uh, first session. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu alayk.